Right guys, this question is going to be a curly arrow mechanism involving a ketone. Okay, ketone reacting with potassium cyanide. Pause the video, attempt it yourself, see where you go wrong, learn from your mistakes. That's the only way you're going to improve, okay? This is from paper 2 2022, A-level chemistry under the AQA specification. As always, I can't show the actual paper on the screen because of AQA's copyright, but let's jump into this and see what's going on. So we need to name and outline the mechanism for the reaction of butanone, our ketone here with KCN, followed by dilute acid, right? So I've kind of given it away in the thumbnail that this is nucleophilic addition, all right? But if you got to this, you, if you clicked on the video and you were like, you know what, if he didn't tell me it was nucleophilic addition, I wouldn't know. Just remember the only mechanism involved in ketones and aldehydes is nucleophilic addition. All right, just remember that and you're going to be good to go. And you would have scraped one mark here to begin with. Okay, nucleophilic addition, first mark done. Now all we have to do is draw the mechanism. When it says outline, it just means draw. Okay, it's just a fancy word for draw. So let's do this. We're going to do drawing butanone to begin with. Now it doesn't say to do it in displayed or something. You can choose skeletal, displayed, it doesn't really matter. You can show whatever the hell bonds you want as long as you show the key bonds that are involved in the mechanism. So I'm just going to draw it like this. I'm going to choose CH3, CH2, C. I'm going to show the carbonyl bond here because this is involved in the mechanism. So I want to show that so I can show arrows coming off of it. Next up, I'm going to have my methyl over here and we're going to have our nucleophile. So what is our nucleophile? This is reacting with KCN. Is our nucleophile going to be KCN? No, it's not. Okay. Nucleophile. What is a nucleophile? It's a lone pair donor. So the nucleophile always have to have a lone pair on it. It's just going to be our cyanide ion showing the lone pair and the negative charge. So where is our arrow going to move from? It's going to move from the lone pair because that's all a curly arrow signifies, the travel of electrons, the travel of a pair of electrons. So it's going to move from this lone pair onto this carbon. Why does it do that? Why does the cyanide attack this carbon? It's because of a dipole existing, delta positive, delta negative. Oxygen is incredibly electronegative. When it's bonded onto something less electronegative, it's going to induce a dipole. So we're going to have a dipole here. This cyanide ion is attracted to this relatively positive carbon. That's going to be our first curly arrow. Where is our second curly arrow? I'm going to change up to a green here. This carbon now has five bonds. It doesn't like that. It wants four bonds to fulfill that octet, that eight outer electrons. So this oxygen is going to be electron withdrawing, attract the the uh, the electron pair in this double covalent bond onto itself and that is going to be our second curly arrow so now we're going to want to draw our intermediate so we'll change up to black here we're just going to redraw our structure all right so this is our intermediate but it's not finished don't think this gets you the marks so this bond in the double covalent bond that was broken, you have to signify that this pair of electrons is now on this oxygen, right? One of these electrons belong to the carbon, the other one belong to the oxygen. Remember a covalent bond is a shared pair of electrons, they both contribute one each. So because it's gained one of the electrons that was originally belonging to the carbon, we have to signify that, okay? So this is going to be negative and this is going to be positive. Now, for the sake of nucleophilic addition, you don't have to show this positive carbon because it gained an electron from the cyanide, okay? The cyanide has formed the other dative covalent bond, so it's donated both of these electrons in the lone pair to form a covalent bond. So this carbon, is, it's not been oxidized, it doesn't have a positive charge, we can just leave it as neutral. So this CN is going to be bonded right here. Now, we've drawn the first part. We've drawn the reaction between butanone and KCN. Now it's followed by the dilute acid. So as you know, an acid, what is an acid? It's a proton donor. So we're going to have a H plus coming into, uh, into the picture here. Just draw that like a H plus ion. Real simple stuff. And what you're going to have here is this O with the lone pair is like, oh, positivity. I am attracted to that. 
and it goes on to the hydrogen right there. And it forms a dative covalent bond with the hydrogen forming an alcohol group. And that's it guys. That is our mechanism done and dusted. Let me draw out the product in case you guys are wondering. It's just gonna be our intermediate, but with the OH shown. Okay, so CH2, C, CH3, CN, OH. Okay, hydroxy nitrile group right here. We've got a cyanide functional group or a nitrile, I should say, nitrile functional group and then alcohol functional group. Okay, it hasn't asked us to name the product, so we're all good. Where do our marks come from? First mark, I've already said, is from naming the mechanism. Second one is going to be from the double covalent bond onto the oxygen. So that'll be our second mark. These delta positive and delta negative charges, although it's useful to understand the theory and knowledge behind the mechanism, you don't need to show that. Okay, so completely ignore that if you don't want to show that. Third mark is going to be from the lone pair on the CN onto the carbon, ensuring that you show the negative charge on the cyanide ion, right? Fourth mark is going to be for our intermediate, showing the lone pair and the negative charge on the oxygen. And fifth and final mark is going to be the curly arrow from the lone pair onto the H plus ion. Five easy marks, guys. This should be ideal. If this pops up in your exam, there should be a fat smile on your face. If you're not sure what's going on with the mechanisms, check out my video, every mechanism you need to know for A-level chemistry under the AQA spec. I'll link it down below. Just revise those, okay? Understand some of the theory involved. Do some practice questions. After a while, it will click into place and you'll be getting five out of five marks every single time, all right? Hopefully you found those helpful. If you did like the video, it really helps the channel out. Let me know any questions down below. Best of luck with your revision and upcoming exams, guys. Until next time, peace.